Um, so sorry, um, really have Go ahead, Elizabeth. I'm on my phone. I think we're some. I think we're having some kind of internet issue. So I'm just using my phone. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, welcome to uh, the kayak food for kayak trips. Uh, our very um, able and eager presenters tonight are uh, Debbie Leach, Elizabeth Purden, and Lynn Beyer. Um, they are all three very experienced in uh, backpacking, canoeing, and kayaking trips and preparing food for those things. Um, and my understanding is that they are uh, as much eager eaters as they are preparers of the food. So I'm looking forward to this. Um, uh, as Edmund mentioned, they would like to take questions as they go. If you have them, you can just um, unmute yourself, ask your question, and then mute up again at once your question is answered. Uh, and with that, um, my name is Lisa Lasagna. I'm one of the off-water clinic coordinators. Uh, so uh, with that, take it away, Deb. Hey, whoops. So tonight, the uh, order of things, I'll be talking about shopping. Elizabeth will be talking about dehydrating and Lynn will talk about kitchen stuff. So shopping. So I guess the, the big message for me is plan to take enough food. And this is what I took for two and a half weeks when we went around Cape Scott. So basically it was a mix of fresh, packaged and dehydrated food. And you can see there my checklist and I made notes on what should happen each day. And I added a couple of extra days just in case of weather. You probably are familiar with the Lynn's column camp cookery in the newsletters. And if you want to find them, there's a number in the archive on, in the members section way down at the bottom under newsletter archive. And we've also come up with an index, which I think Lynn will put in the next newsletter, but I can also send that uh, as an email document to anybody that's on the, the Zoom tonight. People might want to know about cookbooks, and there are a few that folks have recommended. Uh, Fork in the Trail by Lorianne March, as well as another Fork in the Trail, both are backpacking, and the uh, recipes uh, by Backpacker Glenn. There's also a website that you can go to for that. And I found a number of recipes from Lorianne March in the Google Books. Um, paddling.com has some more paddling specific uh, websites. If you go under learn about food and water, you'll see a number of uh, neat little uh, snippets by uh, Anne Desjardins. So that gives you a little bit of idea of things that you can do as well. This uh, document, how long will it stay fresh is one of the things that it was gonna send along for you. And it's sort of a rough guide that um, depends on the, the air temperature, how good your packaging is. Uh, and some things might keep longer than the, the guideline says it is. Like for example, cream cheese, if you keep it, could last a couple of weeks. And Elizabeth said she's had apples that she mailed to herself and they were still tasted great after six weeks. So fresh is definitely uh, an option if you have the space and it's nice for the first while. What I recommend to people is if you haven't done it, go cruise the aisles and look for any foods that are shelf stable or long life in the supermarkets, international sections, ethnic stores and dollar stores. And as uh, Edmund cautioned me, um, we don't want to get into any copyright infringements. So the labels that I'm gonna be showing are just for ideas. Uh, we don't endorse any brands. So I thought I'd just go through uh, typical days and things that people might choose for breakfast. And a great idea is to find a nice heavy artisan bread. The rye breads can last for up to two weeks. And then just think about looking for things that are quick and easy. You can make your own, but if you want to do some shopping, find things like hash browns that are in a Tetra pack, 
just add water to pancake mix, say, find an instant coffee that actually tastes good, might be an option. The uh, shelf stable milks and beverages are good. Alternatives to powdered milk, because you probably need to drag along water anyway to mix with your powdered milk. So you might as well bring the, the fluids along and whatever kind of butters you like for putting on your your toast just people like the ready crisp bacon if you don't want to bring eggs there's some options there and you can even think about uh, dressing it up with a hollandaise say um so i miss one snacks okay so snacks people you know what you like for for snacks a uh, couple hi, of Debbie. The... hi Debbie it's Lisa Booth I have a question yep. about powdered eggs and uh -huh. so I didn't see you mention that um no I, where's the I, best place for that to get I've it? ordered them on Amazon and they're fairly expensive but yes there's something that you could take along but that would probably be more for mixing into like baking I'm not sure that you'd really want to just eat them as a scrambled egg has anybody had experience oh. with those yeah, they taste them? They, they're not, I don't like them. Mm. I'll, I'll use them in cooking, yeah. but I, I do not like them. I don't like them either. Yeah, if you put eggs in a, in a bubble wrap, say, uh, you can just take them along. They'll last quite a while. And uh, hard-boiled eggs, too. You could take those. Um, you, give it a try. You For baking, they apparently don't work very well, but you might want to use... Uh, the flax eggs or some of the eggs yeah. that us people that can't eat eggs use. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yep. Thanks for all the tips. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Yeah. So Lynn said, hey, these she's had some really good mushroom snacks. People like the dried beets or you know what you like to take for snacks. You've gone on day trips, even if you haven't gone camping. So good old trail mix is good. And uh, just a plug for Anything that you might want to add to water to make yourself want to drink more, either a powder or a tablet, just make sure that you, you're hydrating as well as having snacks to keep your energy up. Um, hey, we were hoping that, that people wouldn't do as much chatting. If you wanted to talk, talk out loud. Uh, Deb. Yeah, it's Jenny here. As far as um, hydrating, I think it's uh -huh. really important to emphasize because if you're, you know, moving camp and stuff, we often get distracted and um, using a camelback. So you're sipping all the time uh, sure. and you showed mm -hmm. some powders or something, having something uh -huh. more than water to replenish mm -hmm. your electrolytes, whether you make your own or not, is really mm -hmm. important, especially mm -hmm. in those summer trips. Yeah. Exactly. Any other comments people wanted to make about hydration or snacking? Yeah, so, you know, just look at lunch ideas. You know, you sometimes find tortillas that have no best by date. Naan is also good. Bagels seem to last quite well. You might think about things for rainy days, cup of soup or my favorite crackers. Uh, I found the hummus again, um, not brand specific or store specific, but I did see some at Lifestyle. Um, nut butters, Nutella, packaged cheeses last a long time. Uh, Parmesan, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano is a, a great thing to have for your passes, but it's also something you could have uh, on bread or crackers. And, you know, be adventurous, try some of the tapenades and things like that. You can uh, put vinegar soaked cheesecloth around cheese and it will last a long time. Mm -hmm. Good good plan. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Thank you. Dehyd uh, dehydrated hummus is really easy and yeah. then you can just take out a bit every day. Exactly. Yeah. We're waiting for Elizabeth on that one. Okay. Check. Good. So I'm just going to do the uh, dinner ideas sort of by theme and no surprises here. You can buy lots of packaged things. Um, you can even get the shelf stable tofu for vegetarians. Go to Chinatown and get some dehydrated shrimp, 
shiitake mushrooms are great. And uh, one of my paddling buddies had us do a, a sushi bar. And so she just, we just used the nori almost like a taco and you just piled stuff in the taco. You didn't worry about how well you wrapped it up. You just sort of used it as a vehicle, sort of as an idea. And might be lucky and get some good messages in your fortune cookies. Uh, when you're thinking about curries, you're probably familiar with the boiling bag kind of tasty bites, a good resource. I know that Patty says she even dehydrates the sauces if, if you don't want to take the packages along. Lots of uh, things that are available in the ethnic sections. Nan again is great. And I just discovered these poppadoms that are in the in the uh, Pringles type container, those are pretty good too. Um, to uh, smooth out your curry, the, the bricks of cream coconut are really quite tasty. And it, if you want to use the coconut powder, you can use that in cooking or as well as a, a creamer. And the Italian choices are pretty familiar to people. Um, sometimes I take along the, the tomato paste just to squeeze out a little extra flavor. Same with the pesto, you can use that on pasta. And if you wanna just take packaged things, there's quite a good selection. For, from the Middle East, obviously you can get uh, pouches of olives you wanna take along. Falafel mix, make your veggie burgers get the dalmatas for api, sun-dried tomatoes for later in your trip. But uh, Jenny served us um, fresh tomatoes probably day 11 or 12. So if you package them, you can have fresh tomatoes for quite a long time. And, you know, a nice themed halva for dessert, say. And Mexican beans. I found these beans again at Lifestyle Market. And it's sort of fun to have the, the seasoned pork meat for people that aren't chefs. You can have uh, the pouches of pulled pork, tortillas, sort of different uh, salsas and sauces to jazz things up. And when you're checking out packages, make sure you get ones that are quick cooking. So the potatoes just cook in minutes, just add boiling water basically. The, the Bistro Express kind cook in two minutes, not 20 minutes. So just saves on time and water and fuel, sorry, time and fuel. Uh, rice sticks are good. Some of the ramen are good. And uh, just remember the protein choices that are pretty shelf stable, the Landjäger type sausages. I uh, found it again, the, the tuna in the little foil pouches, which is kind of fun. Hey, might want to jazz it up and have a fondue or corned beef to go with the hash browns that were in the breakfast selection. Um, good old jerky, pepperoni, nuts, and uh, seeds. Pretty good. And then because a lot of the times the dehydrated food can taste a little bit the same, you put in some flavor boosts. Uh, balsamic reductions are great, hot sauces. I like to take along uh, mayonnaise that's in a squeeze tube because you don't uh, get it contaminated with uh, your knife going back and forth to your to your sandwich. And that's a good choice. You know, the mixes, throw along uh, those. How long, or, does, how long will the mayonnaise last? Because that can be dangerous if it does go off. I've had it good for a couple of weeks, but you know, you just make sure you squeeze it out and don't yeah. touch it with any utensils. Yeah, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so bouillon cubes add some flavor. If you want to do some baking, there's lots of little mixes that you can get. Handy to take along panko in case you've got uh, oyster season or some fishing happening. That's sort of good. Anything you can think of just to jazz up the meal a little bit. French onions, French fried onions, different soups to throw in some flavor, which is handy. And then what is your comfort food? You know. What do you like to uh, take along? There's some things that I've tried over the years. Lynn introduced us to the tart shells. 
can whatever you want. Elizabeth's favorite is uh, a fruit cake for the fun things. And my suggestion is, hey, check out the uh, flyers and buy your meat and produce on sale and start dehydrating. And with that, I'll hand it over to Elizabeth. Good job, Deb. So Elizabeth, are you tuned in here? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully this is okay. I think my internet connection seems to be kind of funny tonight. So things okay. have been coming and going. Okay. So Can you see this? if it's too much, somebody else might have to take over. But so far, do you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so first of all, I thought we talked just a little bit about food dryers. Mm -hmm. This food dryer sitting here is not my food dryer. It's an Excalibur. Um, is that yours, Debbie? That's Lynn's. And That's Lynn's. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excaliburs mm -hmm. are the, the Cadillacs of food dryers, I think. They probably mm -hmm. dry things nice and evenly and adjustable temperatures. Those are, you know, a couple of things to look for. Did you want to say anything about your dryer, Lynn? Uh, it's good. Um, and I like that it has uh, nine trays. I, it, I don't find it that much more efficient than my old round one like you have. Um, John Minkley has one that's even higher end. Um, mm -hmm. on, on the left on my screen here. But no, it's good. I'm happy with it. It's usually on the go this time of year. <laughs> it used to so be. So if you want if you want to go back one, that's one of my dryers. I have two of them. Um, mm -hmm. That's Dabs. This one is just one from Cabela's, and I saw it on sale and thought I'd buy it. Um, just, you know, it's got the nice temperature control and that kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't really dry much better than my old one. A thing to look out for when you buy the dryers is that most of them don't, you know, it was, the dryer itself was relatively inexpensive, but then they ding you for the things to put the trays to put on the trays those little plastic trays that you see on the bottom next door to it and the other thing for the drying you know they were as much as the dryer was so anyway and then so and that you, whole outfit be about 150 dollars and this one i got on used victoria 10 years ago for 20 bucks or something and it's got a ton of trays and all the the plastic things to put it on and it's been really good so and it dries just as well as the other one yeah. does so um yeah and parchment um, paper good. works too yes um so these were some websites um the backpackingchef.com is one that i've used quite a bit um there's also a book that goes along with it that i bought on amazon you don't really need the book he's got most of his information on drawing is actually on the website as well I haven't used this um, second one here, the trail recipes. Um, did that come from you, Lynn? No. It, look, I, it looks like a really good uh, website. This good recipes and that kind of thing. And then I guess the Excalibur is the, the website that goes along with the, with the dryer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else have favorite websites for drying food? Anyway. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So you can dry almost anything. Um, fatty meats don't dry well. They tend, the fat is what tends to go rancid. Cheese, well, you know, it doesn't need to be dried. I've never tried to dry avocado. I guess maybe somebody has that said it wasn't a good thing. <laughs> this is my, my favorite thing to dry over the course of the winter is big one pot meals, chilies and, you know, lots of hamburger dishes. Um, you have to just cut everything up small. You can have dinner once or twice out of it and then go and dry a couple of dinners. So doing some big batch cooking uh, winter and spring is a really good way to go. Elizabeth, I think you, you sort of mentioned- we'll go to the next slide. Elizabeth? Elizabeth? Uh-huh. Uh, yes. said it in part of a sentence, but I think it's really important uh, that, that you cut the food items you're going to dehydrate more or less the same size yeah there was another dry relatively the same speed right yeah yes. you don't you don't do chunky beef stew <laughs> so or you, or you get hockey pucks 
hamburger is really about the mess, best meat to dry. We, I've just fry it up with some onion and salt and pepper and dry it. In that backpacking chef book, he recommends um, mixing breadcrumbs in with it before you dry it in that it rehydrates better, but I always forget to do that. So frozen vegetables are great. You just put them on the tray frozen and throw them in. Peas, corn, the mixed vegetables. You can also buy some packages of um, oriental um, vegetables. And if there's anything big in it, then I chop them up and they'd be when they're frozen before you um, dry them, but that works really well. Uh, down in the bottom corner there is a sweet potato bark, the stuff on the right. So that is like mashed sweet potatoes spread out. He tells you how to do that on the Backpacking Chef recipe book. That's really good. Um, the top one um, says carbs, but I, di I didn't put that picture there, but I thought it was grated um, a cabbage. Cabbage. It's rice. Rice. Oh, it's rice. Oh, okay. Yes. Certainly you can cook your own rice, brown rice and dry it. Barley. You can cook the barley and dry your barley. That works really well. Um, quinoa. Down... Pardon me? Quinoa. Quinoa. That's right. Um, I've taken getting lazy and I get the six minute brown, um, brown whole already you know, like minute rice, but it's six minute brown rice. So that's, anyway, next slide. Um, so here we are, this is size matters. So this was my friend, Marg, she paddled around Vancouver Island with us. So we were drying food for about two weeks and we had the two dryers going. So here we are with a couple big trays of hamburger and she's got all the chopped up red peppers. So all about the same size and generally quite small. And bananas are amazing dried. So cutting them just like this, and some people say to put lemon juice on them, but you don't really to keep them from going brown, but it doesn't really matter. They, they go a little bit brown, but they're not bad. And um, just cut them up in quarters and they're just amazing. They're great. If you want them for your cereal, cut them the other way so that they rehydrate in your cereal bowl. <laughs> Again, red peppers dry really well and it makes nice snacking food. And spinach kind of um, goes into a, um, almost a powder, it can end up being quite powdery, but it's a really nice addition to your soups and stews and that sort of thing. Jenny just had a question here. Um, is there a reason you dehydrate food separately rather than making a stew and dehydrating as is? So it's, um, I, I make stews and dehydrate it that way. Sometimes I dehydrate, things separately and then you can do mix and match and decide what you want to do later. Um, both ways work and we do a combination of them. Has anyone tried dehydrating fresh fish like lingcod, halibut or salmon? I do sometimes smoke fish but curious about dehydrating it. I haven't done that Mark. Um, I've dehydrated uh, like canned fish. We dehydrate salmon and tuna and those kinds of things to add to casseroles or shrimp soup, but never fit fresh fish, but I can I imagine. Tried, I tried the fresh fish and I find that with the high fat content of salmon, it goes rancid fairly quickly. Yeah, I can see that. So you have to be very careful. Also, I was going to mention that ground turkey dehydrates very well for yeah, it's funny. I have a dried turkey, but my mom did, and she wasn't very happy with it. So the chicken has not got enough texture, but the ground turkey seems to dehydrate very well. Yeah. So I'm looking back further in the questions. Um, just a couple little points. Um, how long do the home prepared dried meals last, and how do you package them? I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, just a couple more slides. Um, beans dry well and it's interesting uh, I, I didn't put the hummus slide in I know people it dries well but um, I've got a whole bunch of dried hummus at home because I always think of it as a lunch food and I never remember to do it at lunchtime so lots of people like it though And just a little reminder to get rid of the excess fat. You can either put it on paper towels or J cloths. 
or when Marg does it, um, my friend that was the picture back there, she pours boiling water over top of it in a sieve to drain the fat off. And that just helps to keep it from going rancid. And we've never had a problem with that. So here, um, this is a little bit about the, um, how long does it last in packaging? So when I do things over the winter at home, I usually put it in a Ziploc and keep it in the freezer. Um, I also use all those frozen, the, the bags that you buy frozen fruit in, especially the things from Costco. There's pictures of it later, but I keep things inside of that, inside the freezer as well. If we're going to be storing things for a long time, we, we mail ourselves boxes to various places. So I pack stuff up at home and then my daughter will mail it you know, a month later to wherever it is that we're going. And that kind of thing, we usually do the vacuum sealing in the plastic. The issue with that though, is that it, it's stiffer for packing when there's vacuums. And the vacuum seals usually end up going after a little while anyway in your boat. But when we do that, we've never had a problem with things going off. Um, but when we're at home, I just throw it all in the freezer and just keep it frozen. Um, next slide. So rehydrating, some people are organized ahead of time and put it in the jar or something, cold soak and do that in the morning. Um, we're never that organized. I, you get to usually throw things in the bowl and get it in the pot and get it started, bring it to a boil, turn it off and then go away and do something for a while and just let it sit and come back half an hour later and warm it up again and then things are usually pretty good to go. Next slide. So this was just a picture of all the dehydrated food that we were doing for one of our trips. So as you can see, we package, I like to package all the, um, the meal together so that with everything that you need for one meal so that you're not looking around and for bits and pieces in other places. And using those, reusing some of those um, bag, frozen food bags. They're great. They don't get holes in them or anything. I really like them. I'm very impressed. Next. So these were just a few little tips I thought to throw in here. Um, one trip we dry, we vacuum sealed all the dried fruit. And when you go to open it up, it's just one, because of the sugar content or something, it's just one big sticky mess. So don't, don't, don't vacuum seal your fruit. Also, when you're doing something like a chili, uh, measure your portion sizes. So what I do is fill up a big bowl of what you think you're gonna to want to eat when you're out there. And then that would be on all of one tray so that that's one person what they're going to eat. And then I actually often end up weighing each tray to kind of see, make sure that everything's even. Um, and you, then you can either package it and say, well, everybody gets one to this or package it individually, however you want. And then you just rehydrate it to what you think the serving size should look like. So sometimes you end up with more water than what you think, but then the soup and that's fine too. And reuse those, those frozen plastic sturdy Ziploc bags. And next slide. And so this is just, you know, the kinds of things, when Bob and I go on trips, we're pretty simple. We don't eat very fancy. We have probably about five or six dishes and just kind of rotate through them. So those were just some examples of the things that we like to eat. Spaghetti is a real old standby for us, just even the all the very pasta sauce. Um, they dry really excellent and they're almost better when they're rehydrated than they were before. And then we just add hamburger to it. Um, I like that udon soup. That's one of my favorites. I think it's the turkey teriyaki um, um, uh, jerky that I really like with it. And then you just throw in a bunch of vegetables and chili or stew and shepherd's pie. Stir fries, when you do a stir fry at home, just chop, make sure everything's chopped finely and do a double batch and dry one. Um, shrimp dry really well. Um, the frozen shrimp, just the frozen cooked shrimp and you dry those. So a, a shrimp stir fry is great. Um, yeah, we, we have our craft dinner in Annie's. We don't eat it at home, but I still like it. So we take that on trips and we actually add butter to, we take a big thing of butter with us. All this stuff is low fat. You've been really 
you know, busy all day and you're burning lots of calories. So we usually add a big blob of butter to your dinner and it makes it last a little bit longer and taste good. And another slide. Um, I we always eat the same thing for breakfast. So this isn't this isn't dried, but I put my little recipe in here. We always have instant oatmeal. Um, so this is my the, the secret to the instant oatmeal is um, blending about forty percent of the oatmeal in your blender, so it's like a powder, and then you just have to add water to it in the morning. And we still usually just use it from a thermos. So then you add a bunch of other things and the protein powder and it just makes it stick with you for the for your um, um, for the day. Can I interject going back to yeah. the pasta for the gluten free folks? Yeah, some of the gluten free pasta takes forever to cook. So you might not want to choose that when you're going camping and dehydrating and rehydrating gluten free pasta is not always very successful. I find that you can get some of the pastas only take three or four minutes to cook them in hot water. So you're basically pouring hot water over and you're done. Okay, yeah, I've never, never dried pasta. Um, yes, do you cook the meat for dehydrating? Yes, um, if you're drying it, you can make jerky in your dryer, which is something that I did years ago, but haven't done it for a long time now. Um, and that you don't cook it before, but all this stuff with the hamburger is all cooked before drying. Yeah, Elizabeth, I, I do the same thing with instant oatmeal and I haven't found it necessary to buzz it in the blender. It just, you know, re, it just yeah. takes shape really quickly. So, but the protein yeah. powder yeah. is a great idea because it adds sweetness too. How would you yeah. carry corn? I noticed corn was in your shepherd's pie. Dehydrated. Just dried right? corn. From oh, so you dehydrated. dehydrated. Yeah, or a can of corn. Yeah, okay. Cereal done? Um, yep. Yeah. And there's just our boxes of food that we mail. So all those things, you know, they were still good two months later and the space at the top was all filled with apples. Jazz apples will last a long time. And I think that's the end of my section, is it Deb? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Did, did we catch, catch all the chat questions? Um, sort of keeping my eye on them a little bit, I think so. Did anybody have anything else they wanted to ask or add about drying? I see there was a few good tips that came in the chat, so everybody should have a look at those. Somebody's oh. dried sand food dryer and it kept well, so that's great. Uh, it's Lisa Elizabeth. I just had one more question. Um, your, your recipe for the, the quick oats that you blend to a powder and add everything to it. So yep. how, um, how many meals does that make? Um, you, you measure out what, do it at home and measure out what you think you need. And I have an old scoop that I think it's 125 cc's. Uh -huh. and so that, that, and that's enough for one person. And then 125 cc's of granola on the top of it. So gotcha. you have to figure it out what you, figure Perfect. out what you, thank yeah. you. That's great. That's all Freya Hoffmeister eats when she's paddling too, is, but she is it in huge amounts. And she likes chocolate milk powder in it. Back so to the she noodles. always have good oatmeal. Back to the noodles for you gluten-free folks. Um, sweet potato noodles, you can get them at uh, some of the ethnic stores, ethnic section in Fairways. And they're a six minute cook and they uh, hold their body quite well. So it, they're an option. Can I add a tip in here, please? Um, can I add a tip? This sounds like common sense, but if you're trying a new recipe or something you haven't freeze dried before, try it before you take it. There's a story of one of our Cisco paddlers who tried a turkey and freeze dried it on one of his trips. And the first night out, he tasted it for the first time and it had the flavor and consistency of dried eraser. <laughs> Good point. Yes, and save the little packages of soy sauce and ketchup and chili sauce and those kind of things. That's good. Oh, somebody has dehydrated sour cream. Let's see, Mark. 
Yes. And Mark was talking about lacto fermentation to start some sauerkraut and bring it along. Um, I don't know how to do that. That sounds like a great idea too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Mark wants to say any more about that. I think we need to tee Mark up to do the next food uh, clinic. He's got yeah. a lot of good ideas. <laughs> yeah, you can just um, you can just um, put a like cut veg really thin and then cover them in a salty brine. I use a river stone, or you can use a cabbage leaf just to hold the veg underneath the brine. I'm still trying mm -hmm. to figure out a container that works in a kayak, but I've been I've been I've been uh, doing it with mason jars. Um, I guess you could pack them in bubble wrap or something, but you could also bring some sort of a, a different kind of container that would be durable, but um, it's nice because they just slowly get more and more sour and you can keep mm -hmm. things a really, really long time. Um, you can do it with dairy as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I also make um, kind of like a crepe batter that kind of like a sourdough that slowly rises. Um, so there's yeah. lots of different stuff you can do with fermentation as well. And yeah. you just gotta use your nose to make sure that it doesn't go bad, but it's pretty reliable if you use your nose. Yeah, Lynn's got some big thermos things to show us next. So that might be something that you could use Look for at. the fermented too. Oh, cool. Thank you. Okay, fruit leather, yep, that was a good one. Okay, good. Okay, Lynn, whoa, okay. kitchen stuff. I got a pretty simple one here. So I th thought I'd start off uh, by talking about stoves. Now here's my old faithful white gas stove. Um, they are a workhorse. Um, they, you can use the same bottle over and over again. So they're, they're good as far as recycling and being kind to the environment goes. Uh, they're probably the only stove that's going to work efficiently for you in winter. We went uh, winter camping one time and I was using the isobutane canisters and I was alternating putting one on and putting the other one inside my down jacket because as the fuel gets colder, uh, it slows down. So I like coffee as soon as possible in the morning. So um, that's that about white stoves, about white gas. But the thing with white gas stoves is depth. There yeah, I, I have to stay 100 meters away from her because it's too loud. <laughs> but they are very efficient. They're a little fiddly to get going and they have moving parts. So they're not as simple as other stoves, but they are, they're, they're a good little workhorse for sure. Thanks, Deb. And this is what a lot of people like to use on a, uh, on a camp trip is the jet boil. So the stove and the canister and uh, the, the vessel are all in one and they all fit neatly inside the, the uh, pot. Uh, the thing with jet boils is they boil. That's all they do. You do not want to cook on one because you will have your food stick to the bottom if you attempt to do anything that uh, really needs a good simmer. Uh, I have the two size pots, which work with the same cooking unit. So if there are two of us heading out, if Morley's coming with me, then I use the big jet boil. And if it's just me, the little one. Thanks, Deb. And this is my isobutane uh, stove. I, I have a couple of them. Uh, this one folds up very nice and small. And I like the remote system so you can set your, your canister away from the stove so that you can set up a windscreen. They definitely don't recommend setting up a windscreen if your stove sits right on top of the canister. It can be quite dangerous. Um, I don't have a picture of a propane stove. Um, they're great workhorses too. The, the downside to the propane stoves is the canister is not recyclable at all, and they're a bit on the heavy, bulky side. Thanks, Deb. And this is Elizabeth's Trangia. These are the simplest working stove because you pour alcohol into the, the warming unit and you put the stove on or the pot on top. So there's nothing to break. 
Um, there is fuel to spill, so they're not my go-to. And they do take a little longer than the other types of stove. But uh, they're a good unit. I said to somebody, but it, they take so long one time. And he said, what's your hurry? Just take your time for breakfast. Um, and they make no noise. That's what yeah. I like oh, no. about them. Yeah. Entirely silent. Yeah, <laughs> just listen to the birds. And if you're inclined to try out um, an alcohol stove, you can make your own. This is a fancy feast stove, so it's just, I was just messing about, and I bought cat food. I don't have a cat. And you just clip a couple of rings of holes around the top of it, pour your fondue fuel or, or alcohol stove equivalent, and light it. And by the time you've got your liter of water boiling, you've pretty much used all the fuel, and it works. It works pretty well, actually. Thanks, Deb. Oh, and this is my BioLite stove. Um, I don't use it a lot because it's a bit fiddly. It's a, a wood, pine cone, debris, whatever burner. So you put the, the fuel in the top and, the, and then you set your pot on the top of the unit there. But what the BioLite stove does is it has, uh, you charge it before you leave the house and it will continue to work. The heat will um, then make the unit on the side there uh, blow air into the bottom of the, the stove so that it works more efficiently. And it has a USB port, so you can recharge your phone at the same time. I find that it needs constant nursing, so I don't find it to be terribly efficient. I like to sort of set things and go do something else. Um, it makes a nice little fire pit if you're on Darcy and you're not allowed to have a fire, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it unless you were going on a really long trip and fuel was going to be an issue. Um, oh, thermos cooking. Now this is something I've got into. That's a sort of a double sized thermos that you see there. And what I like to do is put boiling water in it uh, the night before, get up in the morning and I can make a cup of hot coffee without putting on the stove, which definitely has benefits if you need to get on the water in a hurry. Uh, if you get one of the wide mouth thermoses, you can probably do your entire cooking if you're soloing it by putting your bark, your food bark or whatever you're rehydrating in your thermos and just eat out of the thermos. Like that one. Nope, nope. Uh, uh, we'll back up to the coffee presses. Yes, these are, these are my, um, I, I have a numerous coffee presses, but I do like my coffee when I'm, when I'm out there. So yes, I, I recommend them. Um, you can just rinse the coffee grains out and you don't have to worry about filters and garbage, etc. Thanks, Deb. And yeah, more thermos ideas. This, you can't, I should have put something else in there for size, but the Stanley thermos that you see on the, uh, on the right hand of your screen is three liters. Uh, so if, when COVID is done and we go back to doing group meals, uh, I can probably feed six people in that, uh, in that pot. It'll probably stay in the cupboard for this year because we're being trying to be very COVID safe with our cooking. But I tried leaving food in it overnight and it was piping hot the next day. It really does. It's like a little mini pressure cooker. Uh, thanks, Deb. Oh, and cookware. So I'm, I like to leave room in the kayak for wine. So I try and keep things simple. So. Um, I'll probably only take one pot along with, and when I'm soloing it, it might just be my jet boil. This is also a three liter pot that you see there, but it has holes in the top, so you can strain off water from pasta and little grippers on the, um, on the top so that uh, you don't need extra pot holders. Uh, and that's a GSI, mm, can't remember the name of it, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good product. And if you want a dual purpose, you can use your frying pan for a pot lid. And 
the less you bring, the easier it is to pack your gear up the beach. Oh, and the cozy. So that's another thing with, um, uh, with cooking in a pot, when you pour your boiling water in to rehydrate things and then pop it in the cozy. And uh, an hour later, you'll still have a hot meal and it will have all rehydrated and blended quite nicely. Oh, you'll Lynn, also- a question about the size of the three liter pot for fitting inside a hatch. Uh, I have a Telco Sport. Um, it'll, it, hmm. Yeah, I know, I think it, uh, so it's, Maybe. can you see me? Is, it's, uh, it's a fair size, but no, I think it'll fit easily in, in most hatches. Oh, I, sorry, Deb, can you back it up for a second there? Yep. Yeah, you'll well, see underneath the pot there, that's one of our treat things. That's a table. And uh, we were laughed at for bringing it, but it's pretty handy. It's a roll top. It folds up to large umbrella size and rides on the back deck. And it's, uh, it's a pretty nice treat to take along with you. Thanks, Deb. Uh, now, this is something that I have not used, but I have been the happy recipient of, of uh, people's baking. But I tried to find one of these for a good picture for you here. And uh, most of the, all I found was, sorry, this product is no longer available. So I don't know if anybody out there has one that they can give me a little more information on if they want to speak up. But uh, I don't think this is available anymore. It has three temperatures, warm up, bake and burn. <laughs> I know the burn cycle real well on that. <laughs> yeah. Dennis McMillan is a great baker, but he was talking birds, not baking with us tonight. I remember Michael Ailson's uh, fold flat oven that hooks up to a butane bottle and it baked all kinds of things just beautifully. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, this is something else I don't have, but I've been the happy recipient of food cooked in a cast iron Dutch oven. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, they're probably, you'd have to have the right boat to make sure it fits in comfortably and they are heavy. And that's the mm -hmm. thing with me, keep things as light as possible. But um, yeah, they, the Dutch oven, of course, can go on your fire if you're in an area that you're allowed to have fires and you can turn it into a mini oven and do some nice baking in there. Lynn, where did Morley get the table? Uh, I, I bought it, it was a gift. Oh, you got it. Uh, where did I get it? I think it's a Mac, yeah, Mac. Okay. But you can More go on and find them or Mac carries a couple of different sizes. Okay, sorry, Morley just carries it, you didn't buy it. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Good. it is here. Yeah, and definitely parchment paper if you're using the Outback oven, good, yeah. Okay. And utensils. Utensils, I was very impressed with Deb moving things into the picture and, and all that. Uh, I don't have that skill set. But on here, what do we have? Uh, this is my kitchen kit. This is my full kitchen kit. And uh, it all packs in there. And this is for two. So. Uh, there's the scrubby and you'll see I have a measuring cup there. I use that as a stir scoop. Um, it'll also double as a shot glass. Um, and yes, it's, I find it smaller, handier than anything that is supposed to be used as a scoop. Uh, always take plenty of lighters because they, uh, if you're in a damp environment, they're gonna go. Uh, can opener, get yourself a good one because they, they can be super fiddly. In, next to the can opener, you'll see a very long handled uh, silicone spoon. I find that really handy. Uh, gets to the bottom of all the big pots and it's not very big. Uh, underneath those lighters, you'll see folded bamboo towels. I try and take a few of them along because they are as efficient as a tea towel. You can launder them, but they're also quite painless to throw in the fire when they get grubby. Uh, back it up, back, back, back. Right, I've got another <laughs> screen thing happening, sorry. Um, 
there, I have a chopstick there, which I stir my coffee with before I press it, a clothespin, which is handy for doing Ziploc omelets. Um, I, you'll see with a lot of my things that I put a little bit of red on them too, because things can disappear into the ocean as you're washing them. So I either have a red string or a red piece of tape. And also it's a good place to store that little bit of extra tape that you might need. Uh, the squishy bowls on the bottom I love because they are easy to hold. They don't get too hot. One of them fits inside the other and they'll stuff into any space that you can make them fit into. The only other thing on there that I think I haven't talked about is the little scraper, which is just underneath the can opener. And that's, a, that's been a really valuable tool for cleaning out pots. It has a soft rubbery side and a good scraper side. Uh, thanks, Deb. Mm -hmm. And then everything fits in here in a little bag. So it's uh, pretty simple. It's, I like the mesh bag because you can hang it up and everything can dry as it's supposed to, uh, it, it like air dry. And um, then I slip it in a dry bag to stuff it in the kayak. Uh, oh, what I didn't mention on the other one is I have um, dish soap. I have the camp suds, so kind to the environment. And of course, hand sanitize it. Now, I'm, I'm not as good as Debbie. Debbie always has her bleach solution along to uh, do the dishes and air dry. Uh, water carriers. Um, these are just a few. The dromedary bags are definitely the handiest. They're also bloody expensive. Um, but this big one that I have there also has a little shower attachment, a spigot attachment, which makes it easier to pour the water. You always want to make sure you have enough water. So look at what you're going to do and figure you might be stuck on that beach for four or five days and make sure you have enough water to last that time. Uh, the, the vessel on the top there is a nice squishy soft one. So it, it'll collapse down, stuff nicely into uh, a hatch. And then there's a the good old Nalgene bottle, which has the measuring things on the side. So that's also very handy. I like to keep some in my kayak and some in my tent, some in the kitchen so that you're not running all over the place looking for things. Next step, and filter your water. Uh, on the top, you'll see a platypus drip filter filtration system. Uh, mine is a six liter. You can get them up to 10 liters, but I'm not that strong. So that one works really well. You just set it up and then you can walk away while it drips through. You can get the pump filters. Um, they're good. There's a lot of Armstrong um, pumping involved in, in getting the water. And uh, this little one on the bottom is just a, a personal thing that I used last year, hiking the Wanda Fuca Trail. It's just a liter, but there are plenty, there's plenty of water on the Wanda Fuca Trail. And it has a little fiber filtration system so you just squeeze the water into your mouth and it worked well. And thanks Deb. Oh, container ideas. You don't have to go out and spend a fortune on, on special containers. You probably have stuff around the house. Uh, Deb likes these little uh, roll up ones that you can fill with peanut butter, et cetera. No, and not peanut butter. Powders are better. The peanut butter dunk. Yeah. It's hot chocolate, milk, and uh, like chicken bouillon. Yeah, okay, there we are. Mm -hmm. And also Deb's picture on the, on the right, she lines um, peanut butter jars, mason jars with uh, lids with styrofoam, and that makes them pretty darn watertight. And uh, yeah, anything else you wanna say about that picture, Deb? No, you, you mentioned about the sealer ring fitting in the small Nalgene, so that was good. Right. And, yeah, they, yeah. and Jenny was talking too about uh, putting tomatoes in a jar, and I don't know if people can see that I have holes in the side of my plastic jar, 
but you can put holes in the top and put your tomatoes in. Right. And if they're and airtight. Then you, yeah. And then uh, if people can see this, I can't see myself, but I see Lynn. Uh, for Ziplocs, you can find that the Ziplocs that have the, the zipper at the narrow end, and they're sort of handy because then you have less uh, of a failure possibility with the closing off the Ziplocs. So that's a couple of other container ideas. Okay. Okay, and this is me. I uh, the grandkids come over with their little things of yop play, and I pick the labels off and use them as nice little squeeze bottles. Old baby food jar there too. That works well. Um, yeah, any sort of a, a drink container you can repurpose for for your trip. And once you got it all packed up, this is a bear barrel. Now, before you think about purchasing a bear barrel, borrow somebody's to make sure it fits in your kayak. They're quite bulky. Uh, I can get two in behind, uh, in my back hatch, in my Telqua Sport, um, but uh, some, some boats you just simply can't get them in. You can get these bear barrels half that size too, and you might want to you know, try that out. These are not cheap but they're really handy. You just don't need to worry about critters getting into your food. Mm -hmm. And uh, as with this uh, bear barrel uh, and just about everything I own, it's labeled. Uh, make sure it's labeled and you'll probably notice that a lot of my things have little red scarves on them or something like that. So at a glance, I know that black dromedary bag down the beach is mine. So yeah. Next one, thanks, Deb. Uh, here's some nice to haves. Uh, the egg container, the good old Coglins cheapy egg container on the left is really handy. It's not going to crush. Uh, I have a wine glass there. It nests, so the stem of it fits right in the top, doesn't take up much space, and it gets used. Uh, and then there's uh, my little folding toaster, um, which you know, I don't, I'm more likely to take that on a weekend trip where I've got a little bit more room in the kayak for bread, bagels, whatever, but they're kind of fun to have. Yeah, especially later in the trip when the bread's getting a little staler, it is yeah. nice to toast up. Break the green stuff off and toast it up. Oh, this yeah. is new, so I can't give you a review on this, but I did have, and I was, Deb asked me to post a picture, but I think I threw it out. I had one of those collapse in on itself kitchen sinks, but it uh, it broke basically the the rim on it broke so it no longer was functional. So I thought I'd try this thing. It collapses flat and becomes a cutting board, and uh, you can drop it down half the height, and it's sort of a carrier to move things from A to B, and it has a little plug at the bottom. So it may make it on one trip may that may be it for it but uh, i'll give you a review later mm -hmm. oh and here's a purden's breakfast table so simple the more stuff you you take the more you have to carry up and down the beach um the less you know the harder it is to pack your kayak so this is a, a nice simple perfect breakfast table Anything else you want to add about that, Elizabeth? Oops. Oh, nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> so there was just a comment about needing, sometimes needing a credit card to help you open up the uh, bear barrel. Because yeah. with the locking mechanism, sometimes sticking a credit card in can help you shoot around and open it up. Right. Right. Um, and I have one of the Garcia machines too, which is the black one. Uh, and I usually have a quarter in my kitchen bag too, because you need some sort of a, a screwdriver type thing to open the lid on that one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll figure it out. Good. And Karen has has used a bear bag. They didn't seem as spacious for the cost. Oh, but she not. says they're more squishable. Karen, do you want to weigh in on that? Karen, uh, unmute yourself. 
we have a bear Thank bag to be <laughs> sorry um yeah if you don't have a, a kayak hatch that fits one of those uh containers mine doesn't so bear bag is the only thing that I can use they definitely are more expensive but um I also use a, a method of, of double bagging or triple bagging into dry bags and then thicker dry bags too uh, the other thing you can explore too is doing a, a pulley system a five five times mechanical pulley and you can hoist a whole lot of food up in a in a tree very easily I just bought a new a new secondhand kayak and two bear barrels, and I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah, bear barrel envy for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, general rule of thumb for water. Uh, yeah, four liters of day per person per day is a good rule of thumb. Four or three. Well, you yeah, prefer four. Some are four. Mm -hmm. Some are four. Um, three if you like. I mean, it depends on what else you have and you know your own body. You know I'm a bit of a camel. So um, yeah, people were asking about your recipes. Okay. Camel means you don't drink much. So if anybody wants to speak up and ask any more questions, we I think we've pretty much done the presentation. Yeah, I like what Mark has to say here about doing a fire skills for kayaking workshop. Finding right. fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that Douglas fur. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to share that. I actually do that in the winter, go out into the forest with just a knife and a little ferrocerium rod and see if I can huh? start a fire when it's really wet and it's 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 a really great practice and just learning where in the forest you can find resinous woods that burn and it's really suitable to the coastal kind of rainforest environments that we see when we're kayaking so yeah i've been thinking about ways to present that and we could send a, a, a film crew and do a blair witch project in the woods <laughs> with you doing that <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh i definitely sign up for that mark that sounds mm -hmm. like an excellent idea mm -hmm. Cool, yeah, Karen was saying, giving me some positive feedback. I might contact Barry about it, I think. Okay, Barry's on the line, I think, to meet you. Uh, okay, hi. <laughs> I just want to say how impressed I am by how, you, how you've how you illustrated everything and have photos of practically every damn thing you've talked about. Yeah, so we didn't have the seeds or the uh, uh, fermenting, okay. <laughs> um, Debbie, do you want to mention which things you're planning to send out to people uh, if sure. they want and, and how you're going to get email addresses and stuff? Well, I can do it. Uh, I can just, if I've got the list of people that were on today, I can just email them from my Director 3 mail website on the Perfect. website. Yeah, so it'll be the how long will it last and the uh, directory of recipes where they are in the newsletter. Uh, okay, great. Debbie, might I suggest Does that include the uh, oatmeal uh, and the recipe? I think I'm that's going to be next month's recipe, Lynn, in the newsletter. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Yes. Okay. Oh, and a re wine recommendation. I have a good one from uh, Queen a Charlotte's bag. Queen Charlotte City. She says this, you know, just a bag of wine gets better the further you are from the liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like to, I like to buy the bags of wine be or the little tetras of wine. I don't like taking a whole lot of glass, but the bags of wine inside another bag. I, I had one of the bags of wine break and I just about cried one time. But if you put it inside another dry bag, then you're you're going to be pretty, pretty safe with it. And um, I've, I've traveled with people who use those little wine bags, new ones, for their yeah. water as well because they can just tuck tuck one or two behind their seat thanks for reminding me about that gene yes i have several and they'll also in a pinch be a pillow or um a paddle float or yes see that's that's why i bring wine just for emergency <laughs> exactly <laughs> good <laughs> well that's super that's we had 55 people on tonight i was thinking you know, wedged in between the birds and Gordon Brown, we might not uh, 
have a full house, but that's fantastic and lots of good questions. Yeah. Anything more? Any comments well, I, or? I'm just feeling guilty because I usually do a big apple crumble and a shepherd's pie to, to do the, the clinic and uh, yeah, nothing to feed you good people. But thanks so much mm -hmm. for being. You mentioned water filters. You didn't mention water purifiers as well. Uh, what, the purification tablets? Yeah, or ozone, you know, ozone to kill um, bacteria and so on in water. Is your filter that? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, it, but yeah, it filters out all the, the bacteria. It's a drip filter. It comes with two bags and yeah. one goes high and, and it drips down into the, into the clean and they're clearly marked so you can't mix them up. Um, I don't care for the purification tablets. I really think you just can't get rid of the taste. So the drip yeah. filter works mm. for me. Yeah, I've used an ozone system in the past, you know, the electric ozone light that goes inside the Nalgene bottle. Oh, those, yes, I've had them break. Really? I had, them, I had one of them break on, uh, on a backpacking trip. So I had to rely on my, uh, my girlfriends um, to, lend me their pumps and that but uh yeah the steri pen you're talking about yeah yeah he uses pristine drops for filters for over 20 years fast foolproof and light i don't so, like that i it's, if they work for you sure so you're just, just saying you don't like the taste i don't like the taste and then karen uses a uv light for three years while cycle cycle touring yeah with the uh steri pen karen mm-hmm Yeah, she probably uses a steri pen. I did yes, have one. Steri pen. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had one. It broke. Um, they're not cheap. Anything that can break will break. <laughs> mm -hmm. So before I forget to do this, I just wanted to say um, to Deb and Elizabeth and Lynn, thank you so much for a great presentation with a ton of really helpful information. That that was wonderful. Good. Oh, most. Right just the tag along. Thanks for Debbie and Lynn for all their work. Awesome <laughs> job. Yeah, right wonderful. If, if anybody has any for the uh, uh, the newsletter, I'm, I'm running out of ideas. And I know there are great ideas out there. <laughs>